so many people come out today. Give yourself a round of applause. We're here today to put pressure on France. In one sense, they're saying that they would like to make a difference in the UK. And in the other sense, they're saying that because the UK is so bad, we're going to take the work, work to an even worse place. Let's take it to Morocco, let's take it to Turkey. The factories are not getting orders. They're not getting any businesses. They've been crushed by uh, people going to Morocco, going to Turkey, going to other countries and producing those garments there at half the price. If the brands continue to outsource all of the work abroad and we don't get any of it back in Leicester, that we won't have a textile industry in Leicester. We're asking for 1% bare minimum work back through Leicester so we can have a prosperous Leicester, so we can look forward to being globally the one that's regulated, looked at and aspired to across the globe as a brilliant textile industry. When they tell you that there's not enough money for your jobs, that's a lie. Fashion brands globally make millions and millions in profits. Brands commit to Leicester. Brands commit to Leicester. Brands commit to Leicester. Brands commit to Leicester. Brands, to Leicester. brands were so dominant, they could play one supplier off against the other. You can often find examples where a brand says, we didn't do as well as last year, so we ask all the suppliers for money back. It's got nothing to do with the production or the orders. It's just to do with power. If you want orders tomorrow, you pay. Factory owners have pleaded that there's a rational system of costing, where they're not forced to produce below cost, uh, where they have more than a few weeks to plan ahead, uh, where they don't need to pay brands back after the orders for the losses that the brands have made. The brands are not putting the orders through Leicester, they're not paying invoices on time, and there's been issues with payment, and therefore suppliers can't then pay their workers. And this has been a massive issue why we've had unpaid workers' issues, why there's been issues around health and safety. If we had the money coming through in the factories, if we had the orders back in the UK, back in Leicester, we would be able to invest more in the properties. We'd be able to make sure that we have an actual living wage for everybody to live on. Those imposed cuts inevitably cascade down onto workers, mostly women, already facing low wages, long hours and insecurity. They don't know whether they will have hours tomorrow, whether they will have hours next week, whether they will be sent home early. We want to hear from your perspectives, what is going on, what are the basic challenges. We have to look holistically at what the community's needs are and help them get those basic needs met. The workers saying that they're getting paid five pounds an hour. Why is this only for the garment workers here? They do hard work. The women here are working so hard. They start from eight o'clock in the morning. They then drop the children to school. They pick the children from school and they're doing long shifts. It's not fair to give them work for three pounds an hour. There's so much poverty that is happening. Why are we told to work for three pounds an hour, four pounds an hour, when the rest of the industries get national minimum wage and we don't get treated the same way here in Leicester? More than four out of ten, ten children in Leicester East in abject poverty. The average income in Leicester East is a third less than the national average. The bosses that you work for, they would have been told there's not enough money. They're told by brands there's not enough money and the jobs are going elsewhere. Did you know that in terms of the sales that the fashion industry makes across the world, only 0.6% goes towards paying wages. During the pandemic, Leicester workers were made to go back to work, but also written down as very low. They were made to work overtime, they were not given PPE, they were not given any protection. Women in the garment industry had the highest COVID fatality of any female workers, four times higher than the average. So when that was happening, the media was here, the government took some interest, brands got together and they said, oh yes, this is really bad, we're going to do something about it. We're going to work um, with trade unions, we're going to work with the workers. The GMB and Unite and the TUC 
um, along with the Highfield Centre with the Fabel, and we came together to be able to have access to factories. Um, and so far, we've had health and safety inspections, we've had um, garment workers that have got their jobs back, had some redundancy payment and unpaid wages. The problem is that we're facing a different kind of crisis now. Now it's an economic crisis, and the brands are once again abandoning ship. Brands coming to Leicester, Leicester, my brand. Leicester, my brand. Leicester, my brand. Leicester, my brand. There will be parts of what the workers are asking for that are very much match with what the factory owners are asking for. Some of them very much unscrupulous bosses. But at the end of the day, they're also essentially bullied by brands. There is not a single garment factory that recognises a union in Leicester. So I want to see garment factories in Leicester recognise unions. Decent work! Decent work! Decent work! Decent work! Decent work! Decent pay! This is the first time since the 1970s that our people has been given the opportunity and has put up the courage to stand up here today. When the black and ethnic minority workers asked for equal wage as their white counterparts, they weren't represented by the unions. So at that time, they did lose a little trust and you can see this mistrust widening over the years. However, now, unions, brands, NGOs, community groups, we're all working together to try you know, get the workers' voices heard. Brands commit to Leicester. Brands commit to Leicester. Brands commit to Leicester. Brands commit to Leicester. I have seen you and I've been with you. Walk down those fire escapes, going to work and from work. I've never known anything like that in any other city. Justice for garment workers here means also justice for garment workers across the world. We need to stop the race to the bottom on workers' conditions in the UK and globally. And we start by winning good jobs in Leicester for garment workers in Leicester. And show that it's possible so we can fight for better conditions for all the garment workers. We started off pressuring the factory owners, then we put pressure on brands, and next is going to be the government. We are the workers, and we're united, and we can win, because there's so many more of us. The workers, united, will never be defeated.